So we're in Advanced Steel 2020 and we have the uh, Great Tech Power Pack uh, 2020 version installed. Um, so there's been a couple of changes this year uh, relative to how we see cold rolled within our power pack. So what we've done is uh, we've actually added a panel in for called cold rolled and under here we've put some of the leading suppliers that we're working currently working with where we've added their profile data into the system and obviously also collaborated with them over their joint requirements as well. So it's uh, Stedman's, uh, Thomas Panels and Steel Sections. So how does this work? So basically it's like drawing an I-beam or anything like that. You can select the tool and obviously drag out a beam where you want. So this is to, to do a manual placement of a beam. And with that in place, you'll see that the dialog comes up. And in that case, I picked the Thomas panels. So I was looking for the Thomas panels icon. Uh, obviously, it's gone straight to the Z section. Uh, you can change it to any of those sort of sub section references in here. So we're going to a C section and then obviously we're into the main library of those. Um, you will notice here that obviously when you're look, trying to look for it, you're probably not seeing it in the preferred list. So it will be under the, the all category, right? Probably obviously because it's in alphabetical order, it'll be down here. Um, so a little tip if you're using these kind of sections or this supplier all the time, you can come into your management tools and obviously under the home tab there, you go to the preferred sizes. Um, and you can make a little adjustment if you want. So under the section groups, you would come into the top half of this and look for things like Thomas panels and then hit the add button and you'll see them appear in the bottom there. And the same for steel sections as well. If they're not in there, you can add them in. I think Stedman's is already included. So then apply that, uh, reload that into the system uh, and then returning to advanced steel uh, just to make doubly sure I tend to just update the defaults in there and then uh, under here we would then obviously if we went to draw another steel beam or we can even just look at the beam that's in there that we actually put in so if we put up its properties whereas before it was under the all you can see it's now under the preferred listing and the same for steel section so even though we've uh, obviously drew it as a thomas panels beam we can come into the steel sections library and then start again so you draw that in there so it's just a way to quickly get to your preferred supplier if you need to manually draw something and then you can see their range of profiles in the system uh, similarly you will find that within the standard macro for advanced steel uh, we are also making a uh, library entry into the gui in the background to allow the Thomas panel sections to be included along with uh, steel sections as well so you, you again you can you can change uh, you don't have to obviously I'm in a test model here for uh, Thomas panels so they're obviously listed under here but if you wanted to you could change them to steel sections they'll be listed under here as well. So you've got steel section Z and C's, and obviously the Stedman's traditionally are in there as well. So um, that's basically what we've added that into for the for the core macros that come with Advanced Steel. Um, also, you'll notice a change in the 2020 power pack in that we've grouped our joints together and put them into a pallet arrangement. So this is the uh, power pack pallet. So if you were to press it, you would see it appear here. And there's several different tabs here on the left hand side and obviously depending on which one you pick they've, they've grouped the connections together so here we've got a cold rolled tab here and two of the joints we've worked on this year to make uh, entries in for our leading suppliers uh, Thomas Panel, Stedman's and Steel Sections we've added in their joint details and we focused upon the purling connection um, our panel connection is slightly different to the standard one. We've tried to address some details that uh, we've seen from customer reports, etc. And basically, we've now got the joint functioning with key client data. So I'm just adding the joint in. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is the little warning notice that pops up now. Purling offset from raft to column face is non-standard to supplier information. So I deliberately set my offset to be wrong to what uh, this particular manufacturer would use. 
So sometimes this happens with suppliers in that um, they designate what they want as their minimum distance, but a fabricator or the situation, the building type, the arrangement of the rafter to the purlins may not facilitate that and you have to do a non-standard cleat. So before you didn't be able, used to be able to do this, it was locked down. Uh, we've now released it so you can create a non-standard cleat arrangement in the system. Um, so similarly, yeah, you can come in, it will create a library entry. It will put the joint in from the library entry. So if you look in here, you can see the library entry it's pulled in. If you want to do a non-standard arrangement, you just tick the uh, non-catalog and then you'll find that the dialog becomes active. So in this case, I want to activate the overhang and I'm straight in now, the dialog's off and running and I can change the measurements in here to what I need. And similarly, I can create a stub if I so wish. So that'll turn it into a stub and if I wanted to make this uh, cantilever quite long, I can type a figure in here and then all the other joint options become available. So like the stays, so I'm going to put both of those on. And similarly, if I decided, oh, actually, I did want to put a sleeve on that for some reason, you could put a sleeve on it if you so wish and it'll create a sleeve. Uh, it works with the standard joint copy tools. The single and multiple operations are functioning well from what I can uh, tell. So uh, when I've tested this and this is actually one of my test models that I created. I'm just looking at a particular range size here, but I did test all of the individual sizes. Um, another nice uh, feature that we've uh, added in is also when in our joint, if you need to make a connection into uh, the haunch and also do a double purling connection, you don't actually have to ha use a different joint button. It's actually all in the prompts at the bottom. You can just see at the bottom of the screen under the command line, please select haunch or stiffener. So I'm actually going to select the haunch in this operation. And I'm actually doing this for a double purlin connection using the same tool. And now in the case, it's actually again pulled in a connection. It did say it was non-standard because it had a, obviously the non-standard edge distance gap. But now if I want to, if I come into the stay profile, I can obviously activate both of them and turn them on. And if I should so wish under the uh, plates, I can actually move them down to be in the bottom of the haunch. So that uh, just to rotate the model slightly there. So you can see now, obviously, again, it depends. Obviously, the situation there, we've got a clash. So you can see that straight away. So but you could adjust that if you so want, wish. And I mean, it might be that the, the roof layout, the configuration to the, the roof. So this is actually in the purling macro itself. So we can come into the joint properties here. And you can play around with the individual joint options to get out what you what is so required. So uh, I mean, you can uh, you know change the start distance. So it's obviously coming from the system end, intermediate distance, last at eaves. So we can try and we can we can adjust these entries in here so to make it, uh, and we can we can move the purlin if we so wish. So you can you can change this entry in here. So I mean, it might uh, be that this changes here. So. I'll just change the intermediate distance. So obviously that's probably probably a little bit much, but you can see it's come right. I mean, I have had that sometimes where it comes right in tight at the at the bottom there. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that because obviously you, you then get into other problems where you clash with the top of the cleat here. So, I mean, if we just do this back to 1850, we're just adjusting the measurements. So basically we're working within the constraints that we have in the system. So what I'm just trying to show you here is that obviously, instead of it being uh, obviously up into the beam, we've actually put it down into the haunch cutting. And again, all the other options are available into our joint dialogue available. So uh, possibly you possibly want to do one um, that that um, for the haunch, you probably want to select it separately. But I do believe that uh, even with that, because it's uh, prompt driven, I think you can actually ignore. So now it's come up with the stiffness. So if I press a right click on my mouse, it should uh, return that. And obviously it will set the joint back to the default entry. So even though I did a joint copy from one that had the haunch and the stay set, it will just go back to the default settings. 
and again you can you can copy that up uh, you can use a, a joint in a group copy if you want as well uh, it really depends some people tend to just prefer to work with the normal standard connection sort of copy methods so I'm just going to I'm just doing that as a singular copy just to make sure it works so I've copied it up to that location if I want to do a multiple one I'm going to come back pick an element of the joint and again I'm just going to pick the the input beams that I want the first ones and then the second ones I'm going to skip the um, the joint itself the other entries because obviously I don't have a haunch okay so that that's quite uh it's we've it's working quite well from what we've seen and what we've tested um uh, this was uh this was a big plus point to be able to put it down into the haunch uh we couldn't see that operation being available in the standard joints that come inside advanced steel and obviously we've populated that with entries for our key suppliers that we're working with um our other joint that we've uh, done some work on this year is our non-continuous purling joint so there, there is uh, an option available uh, inside the system um, and there was some known issues with that so uh, Great Tech invested in trying to create our own version of this joint so this is the uh, Great Tech version of the joint uh, here the non-continuous purling so we sorted out the uh, the stay plates so they didn't clash and obviously the purling uh, the stay was coming in underneath and aligning in here so uh, obviously this is a singular joint operation for the condition that it's in um, you just obviously the same same thing just follow the prompts so select the main beam and then select the incoming purling or side rail and again it will it will put a library entry on that's been created uh, obviously if you want to change it just click the, the catalog button there and obviously so if you want the stays you just create the stay and it'll put it in it'll put the tab plate in and obviously there's a bunch of parameters that are set up in here and obviously if you want to do something different you can change it you know if your space stay plates are 90 by 90 do you just change the parameters in here to what you want again if they're 70 by 70 or something like that people tend to make them out of a standard size flat so you know and they tend to make them square and just snape the corner off um, similarly obviously the bolt sizes the preferences for that can be set up obviously to match the standard punchings you should get uh, a standard arrangement in here the bolt sizes should be set to be the norm that we see for cold rolled obviously the cleat can be designated from plate or an angle if it's so so wish uh, most people tend to use a plate so obviously that was the entry they picked for the library and similarly the welds are set to six mil and fillet so that's a, a quick overview in how these two joints work within the power pack and they work for uh, they will work for other cold rolled suppliers but you would probably need to create the library entries to work with that at the moment we've only uh, progressed this for the nominated suppliers that we work with